All right, everyone, it's time for occult literature, video number 175, Werewolves, of course, spelled without that uh, second E there. Uh, an, an excellent work, roughly full length, 200 selling pages, I believe. Uh, link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon. The second and third links are to my books, blogs. If you're interested, there is also the Book of Werewolves that's available there. I think under the folklore heading. Uh, there are some other cryptozoological works. There's one on like uh, dragons, if I remember dragons and dragon lore. <clears throat> Interesting stuff. I like that sort of academic side of the cryptid world. Now this work is essentially a compilation of short stories that are about lycanthropy and they come from multiple cultures. Again, it's like with the work on vampirism I got done with a couple of weeks ago uh, and released. A lot of these works are monocultural. That is, for vampires, it's like, here's some Romanian legends. Or here's specifically some, you know, northern Germanic, some Scandinavian legends that deal with, like, tuberculosis and vampirism and stuff. They're very specific. These works, though, are more broad in general. This particular work has stories from, you know, the Romanians or Southeast European region, from Siberia, which is quite interesting, Germanic culture, the Netherlands, uh, British lore, French lore, and so forth, even from Spain. And so it shows sort of the wide, the continent-wide practice of lycanthropy being included in some of this folklore. And a lot of it is, is cautionary, and a lot of it's botanical. If you look at some of the recipes that are spoken of here, you know, folk, folkish recipes for becoming a werewolf, what's in them? Henbane, wolfsbane, laudanum, you know, opium, and, and so forth. It's all psychoactive, and if you were to take this stuff and actually prepare it and begin burning it in candles or whatever, yeah, you'd be higher than a kite. You'd definitely, you'd get very, very stoned, you would begin to hallucinate, and you'd probably spend several days acting like a werewolf. Yeah, and you're in the, in the dim, conscious recollection of reality that you would still have. You'd be like, oh my god, it worked. No, this is terrible. I think I'm in hell and stuff. You'd probably be terrorizing the countryside. Yeah, you'd probably, uh, it would definitely, you'd, be, you'd certainly be disheveled and dirty. <laughs> you'd be dragging yourself through the leaves and stuff. You would begin to look a little bit like an animal. Uh, so some of these stories also are about, like, lovesickness, basically. It's like, oh, you know, you know, oh, I want you so much, uh, I, but uh, I've got to kill your husband, and then, you know, cast a spell to turn into a wild animal, drags him off, and then... You know, it's like, oh shit, now every time there's a full moon, uh, I have to go out and kill people. Uh, you have sort of that cautionary young lover's side and so forth. So it's an interesting compilation of lore, and there's a little bit of a description for each section, sort of going into the bulk of the story and, and describing it from a more academic perspective as well. So altogether, an excellent work. Again, full length. It's entertaining as well as enlightening. Um, and, and so I, I would highly recommend this particular uh, release. Uh, again, link in the description of my edition of this work is on Amazon. Second and third links to my books, blogs in the description as well. There are other works on sort of the folkish cryptozoology sort of side. I don't have much of the literalistic cryptozoology, although this particular work in some of its introductory meanderings does suggest that the, the author indeed does believe uh, in actual lycanthropy, like as in, in the magical and psychic sense, more in the mental sense, of course, uh, in the era. That's about all. Peace out.